Welcome everyone to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm so happy to have you all here today. We have some new and exciting topics that we are talking about. So can you guess which part of the body this is? I'm not sure. How many of you anatomy people, nurses, doctors are out there? Have you studied anatomy? Do you know that this is the urinary bladder? So we're talking about frequent urination today for the guys and the girls because this is such a an important topic and we're going to talk a little bit about the prostate today as well. We're also talking about overactive bladder incontinence and I've got some great tips for you so you're going to love that. We're also talking about some nasty synthetic vitamins. You may be taking a synthetic B vitamin, you don't even know it so I'm going to tell you what to look for in that vitamin but also more importantly some na more natural ways to get your B vitamins in which is going to be amazing. Yes I do have my poop platter here as well. You know that I love to talk about having healthy bowel movements so that's something that we'll talk about a little bit later as well and did you know that the natural size of a healthy prostate is about the size of a walnut we'll be talking about that as well when we're talking about that frequent urination okay say hello who's here today dr nagarez i think the, or Na naga shri thank you nice to see you yes you knew that that was a urinary bladder i'm very impressed very good job please let me know where you're from say hello please make Make sure you hit that share button hit it 5 10 15 times that would be amazing let's get all the people in all our friends in on the fun today this is a very live interactive show we also have quiz questions coming up so you'll be able to win a prize potentially i'm gonna also mention last week's winner which is amazing and we're also talking so we'll be coming back to the beauty set we're talking about under eye bags so puffiness around the eyes i've got some great exercises for you today which you're going to love a bit of ma massage as well lymphatic drainage we will be talking about that and we're talking about lack of sunlight tips so yeah i know for a lot of us right now this time of year is challenging we simply do not have that natural sunlight exposure so i've got some tips on what we can do in those dark dreary winters hello elaine in calgary how's the weather in calgary please tell me you have a little bit of sunshine and susan in niagara falls how's the sun no i'm i'm guessing that it's also a little bit snowy there in niagara falls today and hello in in oslem in denmark nice to see you hello hello it's so great to have you here and Melina's here from LA well hello nice to see you and Suzanne from Virginia VA is Virginia I'm Canadian so I'm learning very quickly all of my US states and I'm getting much better Harbor Indus here from Dubai hello hello nice to see you and uh, is it Josie or Jose thank you so much for all of the love coming in. So continue to hit that heart on your screen. Thank you so much for all the likes that you share throughout the shows and some shout outs today as well to some of our great followers. Okay, so let's get started. Let's first start talking about frequent urination and urinary incontinence. So if you're finding that you are constantly needing to go and urinate, there's certainly normal amounts of time between having to urinate and not so much. So if you don't fully empty the bladder, and that's something that we're going to look at with overactive bladder, then this is something that can be a big problem. We're also going to be coming back to the beauty set. Like I said, we're going to be talking about those bags under the eyes, and that will, and I'll have some great tips on some exercises how to do that. So what causes that frequent urination or the sensation that you need to urinate? Maybe you don't necessarily need to urinate, but you have that feeling like you need to urinate and of course there are muscles in the bladder walls and there's something called overactive bladder so even do I think we have a slide that I can show you really quickly with the overactive bladder so even though okay so we're gonna get that nervous signal so this is now encompassing our nervous system as well when our brain gets the signal that the bladder is full then we have that proper contraction of that bl those bladder muscles and we have that proper urination now what happens with overactive bladder is that we don't have that full bladder yet and yet we still get that signal that we need to urinate and there's something called bladder training that you can do that every time that you feel that you have that urge so you're gonna empty the bladder of course first thing in the morning you feel that urge that you need to urinate after your first evacuation so your first pee of the morning then the next time you feel that urge to urinate you're gonna delay that so you're gonna delay it about 15 minutes that's all 
And then if you still need to urinate, you're going to urinate. And that's called bladder training. And you do that every time that you have that sensation. Just delay about 15 minutes. It's amazing how now your brain gets rewired and you won't have to be running to the washroom all the time. Okay? So I hope you're loving that tip because I know a lot of you, both men and women, have frequent urination. It's very troublesome, of course, if you feel you know, you're going to bed, you feel you have to urinate, then you have to get up again, you want to get into that restful night's sleep, and you have to get up and you got to pee again. Big problem, so try that bladder training. Just delay 15 minutes. The more you can do that throughout the day, you will be amazed at how much less frequently you're going to be urinating. Now, some other causes of that frequent urination, of course, urinary tract infection. So, of course, this is something you're, you're getting checked, you're having your urine tested. There's something else called interstitial cystitis, which causes microbleeding. There's inflammation happening here. It's believed that this could be related to a histamine and an autoimmune response. And yes, we have tight junctions. So you've heard me talk about tight junctions in the gut. We have tight junctions in the bladder as well, and they can open up with autoimmunity. So this is something that, yeah, something like a natural antihistamine. I love quercetin for this. It's something that I've talked about when we talk about allergies. Quercetin is something that you can take naturally in supplements which is amazing for interstitial cystitis, but also great for that underlying inflammation that could be happening. We could have kidney disease, another cause for frequent urination, different medications will cause this, and of course, caffeine. So if you love your caffeine, of course you know, or if you drink too much alcohol, you know that it's going to make you feel like you need to urinate. So please say hello. Hello, Jerry. Good morning. Nice to see you here. Thank you for tuning in. And it's great to have you all here. Thank you for being here today. And yes, nomadic delight. I know some people often need to get up and urinate in the middle of the night. It is a big problem, but try that bladder training. And I've got some more tips for that frequent urination coming right up right now. I've got a list, which is amazing. And you're going to love that fact that is going Going to help to retrain that bladder as well. Okay, so my first tip with frequent urination, of course, is to treat the cause. So you've got to know why you've got that frequent urination. Treat the cause. Of course, you're going to have your urine tested to make sure that there's no infection there. Now, number two, if there are urinary tract infections, especially if this is a chronic thing for you, what you want to do is maybe use some herbal medicine, some probiotics, things like cranberries. Blueberries even are fantastic because they help to decrease the adherence of the E. coli, which is usually the bacteria that sticks to the bladder walls, it will decrease that adherence of that bad bacteria to the bladder wall so that it will then help and then with some of the other herbal medicines that I love to support the immune system that can actually flush the urinary tract is amazing for the UTIs. Okay, number three is pelvic floor health. Okay, so this is really interesting. So your pelvic floor, there's like a um, hammock there in terms of the musculature, and that helps to keep everything nice and elevated for women that have had multiple children or children, for the guys as well. Uh, if you sit a lot during the day, this can, you can lose that proper upholding of that hammock, and now things start to sag and, and to droop. And this is why Kegel exercises, for the ladies who know what that is, this is very important in terms of keeping that pelvic floor nice and tight, but at the same time, did you know that wearing heels, so my heels aren't too big today, but wearing heels, not so great, because your pelvic floor is very much related to your feet. So not wearing heels and going barefoot more often is going to be something that you wouldn't think would help with frequent urination, but absolutely it does, especially if you are wearing heels and you're offsetting your proper pelvic floor function, okay? So that is the tip here. No heels, go barefoot as much as possible. And of course, that grounding from the electrons from the earth, which you often hear me talk about, is amazing in terms of being able to help with that frequent urination. Okay, I'd like to see who's here today. Please let me know where you're from Val Val Valeria in Barcelona. Nice to have you here. Thank you for tuning in. Please say hello. And yes, J Bro had to go get up three times last night for frequent urination. I hope these tips are going to help you. Please share today's live and say hello. Keep those hearts flowing in. Thank you so much. And thank you for all those likes and all the love that you share throughout the show. If I don't call you out, I do my best to call you out during the shows. And we have so many people here at once, which is amazing. Tara Moncada in, in sorry, 
Huntsville, Texas, and Jay Bro in Connecticut. Nice to have you here. Thank you for tuning in today. Sonia Rodriguez, thank you for all the follows as well. If you're here for the first time, please put a one in the comments. It's so great to have you here. Welcome on in. I'm Dr. Janine, naturopathic doctor. I hope that you've seen some of my content on the different platforms because I love to educate. As you can tell, I love to talk about natural health. And I, for every show, we do a lot of research and put it into the show so that we can really help to share this great information. Okay. Thank you for all those hearts coming in. I love that. Thank you so much. And continue to hit those, you know, screens or whatever you need to do to send in those hearts. Thank you so much. Okay, let's go on to number four. So for the guys, of course, prostate health. So if you're just tuning in now, at the beginning of the show, I talked about the normal size of the prostate for guys is about the size of a walnut. Now what happens, let's go on over to Lucy. Let's say hello. Last week I was very rude. We didn't introduce and say hello to Lucy properly. Hello Lucy, how are you doing? Lucy's having maybe not the best day because we haven't seen any sun here for like ever um, and we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes what we can do when we see no sun but the prostate yes Lucy I'm not sure if you have a prostate but this is about the size of the prostate. The problem now with the prostate when it enlarges is that it can press on the ureters. Now the ureters are exit routes from our kidneys for our urine of course, that then goes to the bladder for that proper urination. But when this is squeezed, whoops, oh, I just dro dropped the prostate. Okay, thank you. Somebody's going to get the prostate for me. And then I, I make these fun, silly mistakes. Thank you so much, Serena. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the prostate. I didn't, I, didn't crack. <laughs> I didn't crack the walnut. That's pretty good, right? Um, the prostate, yes, will press on those ureters. And this is often a problem. So this is why specific herbal medicines for helping with BPH or that enlarging prostate for the guys are super, super important. Some of them that I love, salt palmetto, fantastic. One of the reasons that it works is that it decreases the DHT, the dihydrotestosterone, which of course causes a lot of that inflammation to begin with. So for the guys, make sure you get your BPH checked. Of course, if you're having frequent urination, if you're over the age of 50, it's something to definitely get checked. You can have a blood test done for your PSA. If it's high, it's an inflammatory marker for your prostate, okay? So that's really important. How many guys do I have out there? Put a two in the comments for the, all the guys that are out there and watching. And I hope that your prostates are nice and healthy. But I do have other videos and information on how to actually naturally really help with prostate issues. So make sure that you check out that that information. Trini Sean, hello, nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in today. Great to have some guys in the house. Okay, now let's continue. Another thing with frequent urination, of course, there are specific exercise exercises that we can do and strengthening the bladder. So remember that holding on to and that bladder retraining really important. So remember, when you do have frequent urination, what you're going to do is just delay. So if you get, you, you know that you've emptied your bladder, you're going to delay the next urge. So the next time you feel like I have to pee, you're going to wait about 15 minutes and then you can urinate. And then you're going to do that every time during the day that you have just delay 15 minutes that will help to retrain that connection between your bladder and your brain and helping to decrease that overactive bladder. Okay. It is amazing. It works amazing. I want you to try this for anybody who's suffering with this. It does amazing things. Okay. Amazing. Okay. We are talking now. Let's talk about something that is close and dear to my heart because I think a lot of people are being duped in terms of taking vitamins. And you think that you're doing the best for your health. You think, okay, I'm gonna take some B vitamins and that's what we're focusing in on vitamin B1 today, which is thiamine. I'm taking B vitamins because I'm stressed out. I want more energy. I know that it's good for me. It's gonna help me to live longer and healthier and I don't get all the B vitamins that I should be in my diet. So you're taking vitamins. Maybe it's a multivitamin. Maybe it is vitamin B1. It could be in a B complex as well. It's called thiamine. And I will be talking about now some more natural ways to get your B1, some foods that are high in vitamin B1. So that will be coming up my list that you're going to be able to screenshot. So stay tuned for that. But B1 is really important for our glucose metabolism. It also helps with our neurotransmitters. It helps with our nervous system. So for our nerves, one of the big symptoms and if you have a severe deficiency, it's called beriberi or Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome when your B1 vitamin is super low, this is very common in alcoholics, this happens, is that you can start to experience peripheral neuropathy, which means your nerves aren't firing, they're not connecting to one another and you get numbness and tingling neuropathies in the extremities, okay? So this is a huge thing, just because of a B deficiency, a B1 deficiency. So like I said, if you, 
love your alcohol, you're depleting your B1 very rapidly. It is water soluble, so you're flushing it out. So this is something that we have to be aware of that we're all getting enough vitamin B1. Okay, so let's now talk about who's at risk. So definitely alcoholics. Now, according to the NIH, 20 to 30% of older adults are low in thiamine. They're low in vitamin B1, okay? Make sure that you're saying hello. I see all those hearts coming in. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's so great to have you all here. Thank you for sharing today's live and continues to have all those hearts flooding in. Thank you so much. Love that, love that. And also, Pujari, hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in today. It's so great. Italo it's Italozza Varela. Did I say that right? Oh, you're, I'm so glad that you're loving the information. Thank you so much. And yes, I'm an excellent informational library. So thank you so much. That's a huge compliment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And okay, Aaliyah has a great question. Is it healthy to hold on to pee? If it's just 15 minutes, you're fine. Especially, and I'm talking about people who have overactive bladder. So if you're peeing all the time, it's not possible for you to create that much urine that needs to be evacuated if you're peeing too frequently. So to hold it that extra 15 minutes, this is a way to actually retrain the bladder. So yes, great question. And I was actually waiting for that question. So very, very good question. Thank you. Okay, Cristiano is asking, can you use a B complex? Well, I'm going to share some information, things to look for that shouldn't be in your B vitamins in just a few minutes. So hold on for that really important question. And I know a lot of you are probably asking, and you're wondering, okay, I'm taking B vitamins. How do I know if it's the good kind or the bad kind? I've got things to look for on the label, okay? Which is really important. Okay, who else is at risk for a B1 deficiency? Diabetics, or not even just a diabetic, somebody who loves and eats a lot of sugar. Anybody relate to this? Yes? Okay, so that is gonna deplete your thiamine, your vitamin B1. And number four on the list, is if you've had bariatric surgery, of course, it's gonna put you at risk a, a deficiency of a lot of the B vitamins, B1 is one of them. Oh my goodness, we're already at, okay, I hope everybody got that list, yes? Okay, we are going over here, and it is quiz time, everyone. So if you're here for the first time, you are in for some fun, okay? So what we do every show is we have a few quiz questions, and you have the ability to win a prize, so this will be sent to you for free if you are a lucky winner. And this is from our sponsors at VitaTree Nutritionals. So we thank them, yay, for making the Dr. Janine show possible in the first place. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who's here if you're just tuning in. And this is why it's so amazing that we are going to be playing for this, the VitaTree Vitamin B12. So again, all you have to do, so listen carefully, everyone, because not everybody gets this right. All you have to do is put an answer in. You may not know the right answer, just do your best. It doesn't matter, as long as you are participating and putting an answer in, it doesn't have to be correct, but try to get the right answer. Everybody who participates is put into a random selector generator that picks our winner every week, okay? And I will be announcing last week's winner in just a few moments. Okay, is everybody ready? Quiz question number one. And you're gonna have 30 seconds on the clock once you see that question come up. Get your answers in. Thank you, user 565 and all these numbers for the follow. Great to have you here. Thank you for following. And for all my new followers, Ms. Ann L., thank you for following. Awesome, awesome. It's so great to have you here. And uh, somebody in Tennessee, not afraid to, uh, of... Not afraid of 50. I love that handle name. It took me a second to read it. Thank you. Congratulations on being 50. Amazing club to be joining. Yes, awesome. Okay, is everybody ready? Okay, here we go. Let's go. Question number one. Here we go. You got 30 seconds. Name a cause of frequent urination. Let's see who is paying attention. And all right, let's get your answers in. Thank you so much. You've got 18 seconds. Name a cause of frequent urination. Is everybody getting their answers in? Oh, I see some that I talked about, some I didn't talk about as well. I see those answers coming in. I see all of those hearts coming in as well. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody got their answers in? All right, yes, so I saw some good ones. So pregnancy, which of course we didn't mention, overactive bladder, too many fluids, yes, but we also talked about urinary tract infections, we talked about prostate, we talked about, I love the fact that somebody put wearing high heels, I love that, good answer, even though it's not on my list here, but that is true, we talked about that. 
interstitial cystitis and kidney disease, medications, diet, of course, caffeine and alcohol related. Great answers. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, awesome. Now, let's continue on, yeah, symptoms of vitamin B deficiency. Great question, Diane. Hello, hello. Before we get to that, let's get to last week's winner. I want to say congratulations to Katie M. Congratulations. You're the winner of the VitaTree Vita Detox from our sponsors at VitaTree. Make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9. So if you're seeing messages coming from Team Dr. J9, that is my team behind the scenes that answers your comments, your questions, and make sure that you're following them on you know, different platforms so that we can reach out to you and make sure, you're, of course, you're following me as well so that we can reach you and get your information so that we can send you your prize. Okay, congratulations, Katie. Awesome, awesome. Okay, everybody else, you still have a couple more opportunities in today's show for quiz questions, so make sure that you are staying where you are and you're ready and you're paying attention to what I'm talking about. Okay, let's talk about some of the symptoms of a B1 deficiency, a thiamine deficiency. We will be looking at a great exercise for frequent urination in just a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. Okay, what are some of the common symptoms of a B1 deficiency? Number one, confusion. So remember that B1, and a lot of our B1 vitamins actually help with our nervous system. So if this were a nerve, we have to make sure that our nerves communicate properly with one another. The B vitamins have, and vitamin B1, thiamine has a lot to do with that. So confusion and not having that proper mental focus can be related to a B1 deficiency. Okay, number two on the list is short-term memory loss. Again, brain function is compromised when we're lacking those B vitamins. Number three, loss of balance. So if you kind of feel like if anybody's had too much alcohol too much before ever, then you kind of feel like as much as you're, you have the best intentions to be straight, that can be a B1 deficiency as well when you haven't had alcohol. Okay, number four on the list is water retention. So your body actually makes you hold on to excess water weight when you're low in vitamin B1 and you can gain weight very quickly. So one day, you know, you're let's say, I don't know, 160 pounds, the next day you're 165 pounds, you gained a lot of water weight overnight kind of thing, that can be often because of vitamin B1 deficiency. I mean, there's other aspects that could cause that. I know that you're thinking that as well, absolutely, but it could be related to vitamin B1 deficiency. Okay, number five on the list is irritability. Yeah, so again, this could be something that, you know, is very common for a lot of people because they are B deficient, all right? So that's really important. And number six on the list is shortness of breath. So do you walk up a flight of stairs and you feel like you need to catch your breath? That can also be a symptom of a B1 deficiency. So if you want to screenshot this really quickly, we have a fun game coming up next in just a few seconds, which is so much fun. We're going to review our poop and let's see who's been paying attention over the past weeks and over my past, of course, uh, content that I share. Hello, nice to see you. Thank you so much, Tony, Diana, Angela, Lizzo. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in today. Great to see you. Sarah, thank you for the new follow. Great to have you here. Thank you. I, I guess you're here for the first time. Panda May, hello. Good morning. Nice to see you. And Gabby, nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. J Angie, hello. Thank you for tuning in. And Herba, thank you. I'm glad you like. Um, and everybody else who's here right now, thank you. Keep those hearts coming in. I see them flooding in. Thank you so much for all the likes that happened throughout the shows. I can't call out everyone at once, but I do love you all and thank you for tuning in. Okay, let's do the fun part. Okay, I love to sort of slide these fun little games into the shows because I think it's so much fun and I know that you love to show me how smart you are, so let's take a look, all right? So yes, we're talking about poop and we have this, this guy reappeared in the studio, so our fun happy poop is right here. Apparently I saw a post online that somebody had like four or five of these in their luggage and they were... I don't know which airport they were in, but these were confiscated and they opened them up and they were sneaking something in through these. So don't get any bad ideas. All right, so we're going to talk about healthy poops. Let's, and we will be talking about now, how is everybody feeling with the lack of sunlight, depending on where you live? We will be talking about that as well coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we're going to do a little game and it's called fill in the blanks and it's a little bit of a poop review, okay? So I'm going to be filling in the blanks. You're going to be giving me the answers. We're going to sort of analyze and take a look at the different poops and let's start with the first one is everybody ready to talk about poop i hope so don't be shy all right here we go fill in the blanks 
around hard poop. So when, if we're talking about this, so it could be sort of what I call the meatball poop, or it could be the little rabbit pellet looking poop, okay? Means that you have fill in the blank, okay, everybody. See Loney, I see that answer came in very quickly, and I know that you've been here before. Yes, okay, anybody else? I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Uh, Sheila Davidson, it's your first live. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that you're loving this. Yes, okay, I see a lot of good answers coming in. I think we got it. Yes, whoever said constipation. There we go. How's my writing today? Is that legible, kind of-ish? Yes, okay. Yes, there we go. Good job, everyone. Whoever said constipation, you are correct. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, let's go on to the next one. What is the next one? Okay, now, next one. We're talking about this one. A floating, light-colored poop, remember this is fill in the blanks, may indicate what? A blank and blank issue. Light colored floating poops may indicate, okay, I see a lot of good answers coming in. Um, yes, 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 I'm gonna let a few more of you chime in. Yes, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I have a lot of really good students here. Yes, see Loney, I love the fact that we've got both answers in some, like Music Addict, good job. Uh-huh, okay, may indicate a liver, and a gallbladder issue. So if you have lighter, or somebody you know has lighter floating poops, that can be a liver and gallbladder issue. Did everybody get that? Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. And I saw need more fiber. Yes, absolutely, that would be an indicator. But often this is something that, you know, is very common to have. Yes, greasy food as well, Sheila. Good point, but Clara draws Koski, Drozkowski, liver gallbladder issues. Good job. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, whoever has liver and gallbladder, that's what I was looking for. And that's usually, you know, what you find in my content as well that I share. Okay, what is the best type of poop to have? So the best type of poop to have is a blank shaped. So what shape? Uh, thank you, uh, is it Leora? Thank you for the follow. Taryn, thank you for sharing. Thank you to everybody. If you could all hit your share button a couple times or, or more, <laughs> like 10 times right now, that would be great. Uh, let them in on the fun. Let all your friends on the fun um, because we don't always do this. <laughs> okay, good job. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mon and Drick, one more Val. Um, who else has got it? Yes, Jennifer. Yes, mom, mom of Sophia and Michaela. Love that. Jesse's, uh, Nadia. Okay, I see a lot of different letters of the alphabet. Is that a joke? I don't know. That's really funny, actually. I love it. Okay, so an S shaped dark sinker. Oops, I said it. Yes. Blank, blank. I hope you were listening. What kind of thing? Yes, S shaped. Yes, okay. I guess everybody didn't hear me. Okay, so S shaped and then blank blank. What is it? All right, Michelle one 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 one. <laughs> okay, good job. Uh, can I? Yes, there's something that looks like a snake. Absolutely. So yes. Okay, I let it slip. S shaped dark sinker. Congratulations! Clap 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 for everybody who had that. Awesome 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 job. Okay, are we continuing? Yes. Let's go to the next one. And. Or are we done? Oh no, we do have one more. Okay, fill in the blank. Last one. Are we ready? This one, I don't know how many of you, I, I'm gonna be really proud of you if you get this one correctly. Okay, you should ideally poop at least times a day. Let me give you a hint. I'm looking for a range. Okay, a range. Uh-huh. Uh, the doctor in the house, the other doctor in the house, is doing very well. Okay, who else? Or one of the other doctors. I have so many doctors that follow me. I can't keep, I can't keep on top of it anymore, which is amazing. So thank you to all the doctors and fellow doctors that are out there. Love you all. And you do a great job helping people. And I know how you know, difficult it is, the studies. And, and let's, let's give a big shout out really quickly to all the doctors out there. Awesome job to all the doctors. Yes, yes, yes. 
Okay, yes, I see, I see some good answers. Some of them are a little bit too much, some of them a little bit too little. Uh, user 544, bang, oh yes, two to three times per day. Two times, ideally for the ladies, three times per day for the guys. Hey, you know, if you're pooping twice a day every day, awesome. If you're even going once a day every day, a good, solid, big, you know, um, in terms of size, volume, consistency of your poops, that's a good thing, okay? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you to everybody who's here today. Make sure that you hit that share button and that you are subscribed. So please subscribe. Make sure that you share today's live as well. And thank you for all the love coming in. I see all those hearts that keep flooding in. So thank you. Keep those hearts coming. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, now let's talk about our viewer spotlight. So this is somebody who we call out every week who's really shared some positivity on you know, the social media platforms, in the content, and in the comments. And this is from Vena Bless 77 Thank you. Or Venables. Venables? I don't know. But thank you so much, Venables. I'm going to go with Venables 77. Thank you, Dr. Janine. I had an eye twitch, bought myself the correct, and she was talking, or he was talking about magnesium. Lo and behold, no more eye twitching. So congratulations. I'm so happy that my information that I shared, of course, here has helped you. Yes, magnesium bisglycinate is my favorite type of magnesium to take, of course, because it is a natural mustn't relax, and, and it does help with those twitches. So amazing. I'm so happy. All right, let's continue the talk on our B vitamins and vitamin B1, so thiamine. Let's go and we will be talking about some of the foods that are highest in that B1, but thiamine, how do you know that it's synthetic? Okay, so I want you to check if you're taking a B vitamin, make sure that it doesn't say thiamine mononitrate, thiamine hydrochloride on the label. That is an indication that it's synthetically made in a lab, usually from ammonia, coal tar, acetone, and hydrochloric acid. And for a lot of people, if you're taking the synthetic form of that B vitamin, it can cause digestive upset, as well as even joint pains, because remember, it's synthetic, it is a chemical. So that's something that I definitely wanna make sure that you are taking care of yourself and not taking synthetic vitamins. I've got some great, you know, foods and one of the ways that I like to get my B vitamins in in just a second, so we'll be talking about that. But let's continue the conversation though. In terms, and I will be coming back to the beauty set, so don't forget we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to be have a new eye exercise for you today, so great for puffiness around the eyes. That will be coming up. Now, did you know that some symptoms, so if you're taking one of those synthetic forms of that vitamin B1, did you know that some of the symptoms of taking synthetic B vitamins when they're chemically made is actually weight gain. So yeah, number one, they make you super hungry. And number two, if you're taking the wrong type, they can actually cause more of that water retention. So it goes against, actually, it causes the opposite of that vitamin B1 deficiency, which is the water retention, right? So this is something that you definitely want to make sure that you're not gaining weight just because you're taking synthetic vitamins, especially that vitamin B1 and your B complex. Now, another thing that it can cause is liver disease because you're now craving more food. You may be eating more sugar. We know that fatty liver is very much related to having too much sugar in the diet. And that could even be healthy like fruit juices and fruits. That fructose going up is definitely correlated with having a fatty liver. So this is something that, again, that you want to always make sure that you're getting your vitamins from whole food sources. The other nasty things to look out for in your vitamins are some of these fillers and flow agents, which we will go into next week. I'm going to continue this conversation next week. Silicon dioxide, why you don't want to be taking that. Microcrystalline cellulose should not be in your vitamins. Magnesium stearate, the big nasty one that, you know, I always talk about when I'm on television. I was on television last week, talked about this. This should not be in your vitamins. It's not magnesium. It is a flow agent. It's a chemical. You do not want to be taking those. We'll continue that conversation next week. Okay, now I want to make sure that you're not taking synthetic vitamins, okay? Am I driving this point home strong enough? I hope so, okay? So take a look at this video in case you missed it. So look for it. You can just look up my name on the social media platforms and it's called Three Common Reactions. Here are three to common reactions to taking synthetic B vitamins. Number one, you look in the toilet after urination and you notice that it's fluorescent yellow. Well, that's because the B vitamins are water soluble and you're basically flushing them through your urinary system. Number two, 
nausea. So a lot of people, when you take a synthetic vitamin, you feel nauseous, and that's because it's not natural. It's synthetically made, often from the petrochemical industry. And number three, extreme hunger. So some people actually gain weight when they're taking synthetic vitamins, especially the B vitamins, because it's causing you to be more hungry, and again, because they are synthetically made, not as natural as, of course, a whole food nutrient and a B vitamin, which is something that I personally take. That's something that you wanna look for, again, without fillers or flow agents. Follow for more natural health tips. There you have it. So yeah, some of the other symptoms at, when you're taking synthetic vitamins that a lot of people don't realize. So I hope you check out my content. Let's talk about some of the foods though that are high in vitamin B1. Here is my list. Okay, let's start with, I'm gonna hold number one for you. Okay, so my favorite source, because this is the type that is actually in the supplement that I take, which is, I'm not gonna give it away. Okay, we're gonna get there in just a second. Okay, let's go to the rest. Number two, flax seeds. So they have 137% of the daily value, which is 1.2 milligrams only for vitamin B1 for your thiamine. So in 100 grams of flax seeds, you're getting 137%. Okay, let's go to number two, sunflower seeds. So your seeds are fantastic. Number three, and that is 123% of your daily value. Okay, let's also go to number four, which is hemp seeds, great for protein. So add this to your salads and things, into your oatmeal or whatever you're eating, and make sure it's organic, non-GMO, right? Oatmeal, really important because of the glyphosate. Okay, so that's really important uh, with your hemp seeds, 107%. Okay, number five on the list is pistachios. Now, pistachios are green because they also have lutein and zeaxanthin, great for your eye health, okay? So that's important. Uh, pistachios at 56% of the daily value, and that's for 100 grams of pistachios. Okay, number six on the list is <laughs> bratwurst. Yes, how many Germans out there? Yes, hello, hello, 38%. So I know not everybody loves bratwurst, but it is very good, okay? Here you go for our vitamin B1. And number seven on the list is rye bread. So yes, 36% of daily value. For a lot of people, rye bread is more easily digested as compared to some of the other breads. Hey, that's something we could talk about next week as well, is the benefits of sourdough bread. Aha, let's add that to next week's show as well. We'll talk all about sourdough and how it's so much better for digestion. Okay, and number eight on the list is salmon so yeah salmon has a lot of different of course health benefits those omega-3 is really important but also has that vitamin b1 and number one my favorite is let's reveal chlorella now chlorella is a blue green algae often taken in supplements huge amount of vitamin B1, 141% of the daily value. So no wonder it gives you energy. It's, and we know, again, in times of stress, we deplete our B vitamins very readily. That is amazing. Okay, now let's, I wanna know, how, how's everybody doing in terms of your sunlight exposure? Okay, if you're in a sunny place, if you can see the sun right now, please put a sunshine in the comments. Thank you for the follows. There's a, like a million followers that just came in. Thank you so much. And I'm exaggerating just a little bit, but honestly, there's a million followers that just came in. So thank you so much for your support and for following. Please hit that share button as well. Let's bring some, we have a couple more quiz questions coming up where you can win a prize. So make sure that you're letting your friends know. Uh, Romanian Chica, it's snowing there. Okay, Lulu has sun. Please tell me now, music addict, if you have sun, please tell me where you are. Trini, Melissa has sun. Vasir, Renee, oh my goodness, I'm so, so envious. Julia, Mary Hernandez, you all have sun? Okay, where are you people? This is amazing. Okay, maybe you can like, we can open up a beam and like just channel it over here because in Canada right now, we've got a snowy day, California, okay. Caribbean, okay, awesome. Yes, I got it, I got it. Candice, yes. Marie Maria Nava has son, uh, California, Los Angeles. Okay, so many people um, from the U.S. are here. Amazing. Colorado, oh, it's nice and sunny. Is it sn sunny and snowy in Colorado, which is like the best combination in the wintertime? Love it, love it. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So some of you have some snow. Now, some of you have some sun. A lot of us do not have either one of those right now. We're getting a bit of snow here right now in Canada. So what do we do with lack of sunlight? Because we start to feel it when we don't have enough natural sunlight exposure. And part of it is for vitamin D deficiency, but a part of it is just 
we're not getting that natural full spectrum light, we tend to stay inside under artificial lights, very bad for our circadian rhythms, very bad for our circadian health and our mitochondria. Our mitochondria are not happy when we're not in the sun. Okay, we will be talking and I've got some new exercises for under eye bags that's coming up, so don't go anywhere. But let's go through my tips really quickly for lack of sunlight. Number one, you still, as much as you cannot see the sun, I said to my kids, let's, you got to do the, you know, every morning, you got to look towards the east, look at, there is no sun. Yes, there is sun. Even though you can't see it, it's behind the clouds, there is sun, there is full spectrum light. It's not the same amount and volume, of course, and strength, but you got to still look at that morning sun as soon as you wake up, and especially when the sun is just rising, really important. Okay, number two is grounding. So taking your shoes off or following some of my winter grounding tips if you are in you know, a colder climate, follow, look at the, up that video that I have that you can do. I've got little hacks like my garage door track, which is grounded. I hold on to that. I look towards the east and it just takes a few seconds. You don't have to do it for long, but a really important way to make sure that you're grounding. To pull up those Earth's electrons, very anti-inflammatory, will help your energy levels, okay? If you're not grounded, you can't discharge all of that positivity happening, and it's not positive in a good way. It's too much of those protons, okay? So you've got to discharge that, and that's what grounding does for you. Okay, number three is red light. So yeah, I'm loving my red light. Red light therapy goes a long way to really help with your energy levels, especially when you're not seeing that sun. Okay, how many people love this? Yes, um, yes, I love it, love it, love it. Thank you, thank you. I see all those hearts coming in. Continue to let those hearts flow in. Love and all the likes that you share. Thank you for following Big Game 68 and Andrea and Del is it Delilah? Thank you so much for the follows. A K Band tease. Thank you so much for following and for tuning in today. It's so great to have you all here. Okay, let's continue. As well, number four, vitamin D foods. So there aren't a lot, and you don't get a lot of vitamin D from foods. And this is the big, you know, unfortunate thing about food supply. So seafood, yes, mushrooms, if, especially if they've been under natural sunlight, then you're gonna get some vitamin D from mushrooms, but in very small amounts. And that's, this is problematic, especially if you live somewhere where you don't get enough natural sunlight exposure, especially through the winter, we can't make vitamin D because there's not enough UVB on our skin to make it, okay? So that runs us the risk of vitamin D deficiency. Number five is, of course, a vitamin D3 supplement. Always make sure it's a vitamin D3, not D2, D3. And I've got other videos on that, why that's so important. And number six, the ultimate, Go find some sun. If you can, get on a plane, walk, run, take a bike, I don't know, just get somewhere sunny if you can. Even it, it's a good investment for your health if you can do it. Really important to get some natural sunlight exposure. And I know a lot of you are saying, well, it's just impossible, I know. But if you can do it, you know, you should do it, okay? That's, that's my note to everybody. And everybody's like, yes, okay, the doctor says, I gotta go on a sunny vacation, green light, let's go, let's go. If you can make it happen, absolutely, it's the best thing for your skin and your health. And of course, no sunscreen. All right, so I've got other videos on that. You don't wanna be wearing sunscreen, okay? Yeah, and you're going like, what? What did you just say? Well, there's healthier ways to do it and you can always use, of course, a natural sunscreen recipe, which I have that video as well. You can look that up. Okay, we're at quiz question number two. Woohoo! Okay, so everybody's here for the first time. We are playing for the prize. This is from our great sponsors at Vitatree. Thank you so much to everybody who's tuning in. We thank Vitatree, our sponsor, for making the Dr. Janine Show possible. Are we ready? Quiz question number two. Okay, here we go. Get your answers in. Name a food that's high in vitamin B1. Thiamine, let's go. Get your answers in. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Everybody getting your answers in. Okay, 10 seconds left on the clock. Everybody get your answers in, I hope, and I see all those hearts coming in. Thank you so much, love that, love that. Thank you so much. Awesome, okay, everybody got their answers in. Make sure now before I reveal, make sure you hit that subscribe, that follow button if you're here for the first time, and hit that share button as well for your friends. Thank you for sharing, I see that, see, just shared. Thank you, awesome, awesome, awesome. I see all those follows coming in, okay? Let's reveal, thank you to everybody who's here right now. All right, so, 
uh, food high in B1, there you go, chlorella, which I love, which is sometimes a supplement, flax seeds, sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, pistachios we talked about as well, bratwurst, rye bread. Did anybody say bratwurst? I didn't see it. I don't know. Did anybody get that one? Yes, chlorella, Ron, you got that. Awesome. Safrina, you said salmon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, Duane said rye bread. Awesome. Okay, good job, everyone. Now there's, we have one more quiz question, so that's coming up in just a second. Let's talk a little bit about an exercise really quickly. We, so earlier, if you're just tuning in now, and of course you can, after the show is done, you can search this up on one of the platform, a couple of the platforms still will replay and it's archived as the show. So we talked a little bit about frequent urination, but one of the best exercises that you can do, believe it or not, for frequent urination, and remember with flat feet, so not like with me with the, with the heels on the boots, you want to be flat-footed because your pelvic floor is very much related to your feet and the strength of your pelvic floor. So barefoot or with flat running shoes on or barefoot trainers on, it's the squat. Yes, so squatting actually and what you want to do, which is super important, which they never tell you in a class or a trainer won't tell you, is before you squat, ladies, you know what the kegel is. You do the kegel. So guys, everybody can do a kegel right now. I didn't think I was going to do this live, but we're going to do it. Okay. So pretend that you're urinating. So pretend that you're urinating. Please don't urinate right now. <laughs> pretend that you're urinating and you have to squeeze. You got to hold in the urine. So you're going to stop your urine. You got to squeeze that muscle. That's the kegel and then release. Okay. So before you squat, what you're doing is you're doing your kegel. So you squeeze and then you squat and that will help to strengthen in terms of all of your pelvic floor, but also helping with that frequent urination. Okay, does everybody love that? I hope I'm getting some, uh, some laughy. Yes, Rob, yes, okay, good. Rob, you did the Kegel, right? I know you did, I know you did. Okay, everybody did the Kegel? That's, that's the first Kegel for a lot of guys out there, I'm sure, okay? If it's a first time, we're putting one in the comments, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's go over, and our final quiz question is coming up in just a second, but let's talk now about our super fans. So thank you so much. I know we had so much support that came in last week during the live So Thank you so much. You guys are so generous. You guys are the best. Love my fans. Love everybody who supports, not just me, but the entire channel and everything that we do here on the Dr. Janine channels and the Dr. Janine show. So thank you to all of you. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, Michelle A, 818, you love that, the Kegel? Yeah, the Kegel for the guys. No, nobody ever talks about doing Kegels for guys. It's so important. Okay, here we go. All right, are we talking? Yes? Yes, we're going here to the beauty set. Let's talk about, and I, this was high, highly requested topic that we talk about those bags under the eyes. So the guys get them, the ladies, we tend to be more concerned about these things, but it doesn't matter. And we have another, you know, quiz question coming up. So do we? Yes, we do. Okay. Are we ready? Let's talk about these exercises. Now, if you missed it last week, we did some face taping, which was amazing for forehead wrinkles and things, which, and I hope that you guys are trying that, but let's talk really quickly about those under eye bags. And one of the things that we're going to start off with is some lymphatic drainage, but then we're going to be looking at this muscle, the orbicularis oculi muscle, you can see how it goes right around the eyes. And when there's some lymphatic congestion around the eyes, it's usually not just in the eye area, but we will be addressing the local area. My first tip is to drain the lymph. Now the lymph, we know the main part of our lymph chain is actually mid thoracic here. So it's something that we definitely want to start draining that lymph. So what I ask you to do, I want everybody to do this at home as well, is just go under your armpits. You do a little bit of a massage under the armpits, okay? Got to get that lymph going. Then you're going to do just above and below your collarbones, just like this. I usually go opposite side. You, some people like to do little circles like this. That's fine as well. You're just activating that lymph, starting it to drain. And see, you may find that you need to swallow because things are starting to drain already and that's a good indication that you're moving that lymph. Then you're gonna go down your neck. You can also do your knuckles on the lower jawline up to your ears, do a little shake at the ears and then down your neck, behind your ears, the SCN muscle right here, okay? 
and like that. I've got other videos on exactly how to do like the full body lymphatic drainage, so make sure after today's live that you're gonna check that out, okay? So first thing, you gotta drain that lymph because the puffiness here is usually, it could be coming from puffiness here because your lymph isn't draining it in your armpit from your breast. Okay, so that, that is important, that making that connection, you gotta drain that lymph, okay? So you're gonna do that first. Now we're gonna do the owl eye exercise that you're gonna love. Okay, so you're gonna take your middle finger and your thumb. Connect those, everybody got that? Okay, middle finger, and what we're doing is we're working on that orbicularis oculi muscle. Okay, so everybody connect your fingers, middle finger and thumb. You're gonna put that up on your eyes around that muscle. Now, you're gonna stabilize your forehead with your index finger, okay? So stabilizing, let's see. Stabilizing, I wanna make sure I'm sure. Okay, so connect, stabilize your forehead with your, there we go. And now you're gonna do little push-ups. So it's like you're trying to squint with your eyes against the pressure of your owl fingers. Does that make sense? And that now is training that entire muscle. Anytime you train a muscle, you're sending more circulation to that musculature, and now the lymph needs to drain further. Then to top it off, the third step is to do little massages around the eye area. And this is amazing, because you'll see a little bit red. Uh, so do this with you know, clean skin. Uh, you could have your serums or whatever, you know, skin care. You don't want to necessarily have makeup on yet, but do this first thing in the morning. It is amazing. So you do that, go and get dressed, come back, and you'll see that your eyes are drained. All that puffiness, gone. Okay, so I want you to try this, okay? This is amazing for those puffy eyes and those dark circles under the eyes. It will help with that as well because we're working on this muscle, the orbicularis oculi. All right, everybody love that? Okay, you're loving that. Thank you so much. Thank you for the gifts coming in. I see that, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are at quiz question number three. Here we go, we're playing for the B12 from our sponsors at VitaTree. Are we ready? Okay, this one's super easy. Be really quick on this one. Here we go. True or false, lymph congestion causes puffiness under the eyes. Get your answers in, you got 30 seconds, let's go. Okay, I see lots of great answers coming in. Thank you for all those hearts coming in. David Zed, thank you so much. I see all of those hearts. And thank you for the likes and all the love that you share throughout the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know a lot of you are busy throughout the show, you know, hitting those likes and, and those hearts. Thank you so much. Okay, time is out. And okay, did everybody get it correct? I hope so. Thank you for subscribing as well. So many new subscribers, new people here today. Of course, the answer is true. So congratulations. Please make sure that you are following Team Dr. J9 so that if you are a lucky winner, that we can reach out to you. So if you're just tuning in right now, we just talked about some exercises for under eye bags. We talked about B1 deficiency, the best sources of foods for vitamin B1. We also talked about frequent urination, some exercises for that some tips for lack of sunlight, some nasty things to look for, you know, that you don't want to be ingesting in your vitamins. We will continue that conversation next week. If you do have questions, now is the time, so ask me. And the other thing that's so exciting is that we are going to have another time during the week in which you can sit down up close and personal with me, ask me your questions, because we can't always get to everybody's questions during the live show on Tuesday. So we will open up another sort of Q&A type of, you know, up close and personal with Dr. Janine show. Open mic, that is coming up very soon. So make sure that you're following me on the social media. Check the sto my stories and everything because we will be posting it in the community and things we will be posting when that is happening. It's gonna happen sooner rather than later. I hope everybody's ready for that if you've got your questions. Also, you can always send a question to the team at this email address, which is hello at vitatree.com. So if you had any type of you know, product related questions and things and protocols, then definitely make sure that you are reaching out to the team there. Hello, hello. Thank you to everybody who's tuning in for the first time today. I know that a lot of people are from different parts of the world and uh, bring Joey and Ross on the next live. Okay, just, yes, just day, Con is it Connery's? Yeah. <laughs> 
I know what you're talking about. Yes, I always get that all the time. Amazing, amazing. Quit Sugar Coach. All right. Nice to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Great to be here. And yes, hello, hello. I know that um, Lulu, I know that my team behind the scenes is answering your question. And what can we do for Nino has a great question. What can you do for red eyes? Well, did you know that your eye health is very much related to your liver health? So where's my fatty liver? Let's look at the liver for just a second. So does everybody know what the emotion of the liver is? If you know that answer, just put it as a quick, like, impromptu question to you. The emotion of the liver, uh, if you didn't know, is yes. Siloni, 23, very good, is an U.S. Nancy. Yes, you guys got it. Ladies, you're right on top of this. It is anger, so anger. So suppressed anger can manifest in redness of the eyes. Allergies, a histamine response can be red eyes. So really have to know it could be related to a fatty liver as well, which is definitely on the rise. If you eat too many sweets, fructose, sugar, it could even be fruits, fruit juice, that can definitely affect your liver health, okay? If you're not getting enough sleep, we know that that can affect eye health as well. And you know, it could be allergic reaction. There's so many different reasons for red eyes. So you really have to get at the root cause. But often what uh, does, Nino, does blue light cause red eyes? Absolutely, thank you for bringing that up as well. So my blue light blocking glasses are actually, so it's very seldom that when I'm indoors that I don't have my blue light blocking glasses on. And these are my daytime glasses, which are very yellow. And I have multiple pairs, so don't ask me what kind. I have like so many different brands. I probably have at least 15 pairs of different blue light blocking glasses all over my house, my office, they're everywhere. So um, yeah, so blue light blocking glasses, really, really important to help to protect your eye health, but more importantly, to protect your nervous system and your circadian rhythms and your metabolism, your liver even. I mean, it's, it's crazy what artificial light does to us. Okay, awesome, awesome. Awesome questions. Thank you to, oh, Kathy, you're so welcome. Thank you for all the hearts as well. So much positive feedback. Okay, and you know, next week, what we will be talking about. So I promised that we would talk about a couple of things. So let's just, thank you. I'm going to give that back to you. Uh, we're going to talk and continue the conversation on, you know, some of the not so great things in your vitamins, so toxic things to be looking for in your synthetic vitamins. We'll talk about sourdough bread as well, which I love. And thank you, Priya. Thank you for tuning in. Um, do I do grounding? At, yes, absolutely. Every single day I do grounding. And I do it in, in different ways. Um, outside, you know, I go out onto my concrete with my just my socks. Usually it's a little bit moist, so and I don't care uh, because that helps with the connectivity with for your grounding if there's a little bit of moisture. Um, sometimes I'll take my socks right off and go out, out in the snow. Uh, I hold on to my garage thing, which is grounded, um, the garage door metal thing, which is grounded into the earth. I touch that and I can actually feel it. So when, I, when my body grounds, I don't know about anybody else, but I can actually feel it. Like it's a, it's a feeling that I have when I connect. And yeah, I'm very electrostatically I don't know. I, I shut, we talked about this yesterday. I shut things down, like in terms of computers and lights and stuff. Like, I don't know. It's just my energy is like crazy, <laughs> crazy good in a good way. I hope everybody would agree. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about next week. And I hope to see you all next week. We do this every Tuesday. Remember to stay tuned. So keep watching out for any messages that you see on my social media platforms as to when we're going to have that intimate sort of open mic Q&A with me so you can really ask your questions and I'll have a little bit more time to, you know, really delve into some of these topic matters um, a little bit more. So I hope to see you there. Thank you to everybody who's a new follower. You tuned in for the first time. Make sure that you, you know, are checking out all of my content and share the love. Thank you. If you do have questions, make sure that you're commenting in the comment section. And we'll see you all next week. Have a great week. Enjoy the sunshine if you're in those sunny places. And if not, use some of those tips that we talked about today so that you can feel a lot better.